All right. So there's never been a period in history yeah. of agency, uh, the agency business model or the business buying model where it's been disrupted the way that we've disrupted it. It's never been a time where it's been eliminated uh, for you to have to prospect to get clients, do outreach and cold calling and scraping and emails and all of that stuff to get clients. And it's also never been a time in history where you didn't need money, you didn't need credit, you didn't need funding or loans to buy a business. So we're gonna show you guys in this video how to get equity in businesses without buying a business. Now, why would we wanna do that? And then I'm gonna let Curtis go ahead and take over because he's the expert in buying and selling businesses. We do not want to own the business because we don't want to be liable. We don't want uh, to deal with anything legal. We don't want the responsibilities. We don't care about the day-to-day -day operations or dealing with staff hiring and firing. You guys, you want the money. Just be honest. You can put your name on the things that you build. But if you're just looking for passive income and everything, I'm going to show you how to go from agency to partner. Partner, me and Curtis, uh, if you already have clients, we're going to show you how to turn those clients into partners, plug in 10 monetization steps and get up to 200K per month. If you are coming here because you were interested in buying a business, we're going to show you how to buy into a business without using any type of money. I'm not talking about no money down. I'm not talking about the seller financing that you heard before. We're talking about you just not using any money, no credit or none of that. And you still be able to pull equity out of these businesses. So, Curtis, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let them know your credentials and why they should listen to you. Hey, Curtis Witt. Um, I bought and sold uh, many different businesses, uh, still own several of them. And uh, over the last couple of years have gone through everything that you are about to experience uh, such that I can tell you the great side of it and the horror side of it. And it's the black side, it, uh, uh, the dark side, if you would, not black side, the dark side that people don't tell you about. Right. And um, and so you in order to be educated, you need to have and, and make a full educated decision, a full rounded decision. You really need to have all, all the information you need to understand um, what the what the good things are in having your name on that bottom line and the not so great things. And one of those things, obviously, is, you know, I I got when I got in and started having the business, the the immediate thing was the drop in revenue and the increase in employee uh, dissatisfaction. Now, <laughs> which meant that I, I wanted the revenue and I didn't want the employee headaches. I didn't want the IRS headaches. I didn't want the the um, liability. I didn't want the risk that went along with it. There was 15 things that I was like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to. Uh, this is not the life that I thought it was. And there, there used to be a, a little uh, here, here's a here's a here's something that your your the our audience can go look at. Go look at Tudor the Turtle, which was an old, very, very old uh, commercial or uh, cartoon. And Tudor, every episode, he wanted to be something. He wanted to be an astronaut. He wanted to be a fireman. And Mr. Wizard would make him a fireman. And then afterwards, he, at the end, Tudor didn't want to be a fireman anymore. <laughs> it was harder than he thought. It was, yeah. it was all the things that he didn't think, right? You'd go, help, Mr. Wizard. I want to come home. And so Mr. Wizard would bring him home, right? That's a business owner. When you get into it, I mean, you, you see the folklore and everything and you see the Elon Musk of the world and you're like, oh, this is great. It's not not as a small business owner, maybe as a corporation. And even as a corporation, you've seen what happened. Just a um, open AI, all the drama that's going on over mm -hmm. there with Sam Oatman. Uh, um, it is it, it's, it's it's fraught with peril. And so getting equity without buying the business is a godsend and i call it cinderella equity and the reason why i call it cinderella equity is because it's a fairy tale right it's a, it, it it's too good to be true but it's true and and we show you how to do that we show you how to you know pull up on uh the 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 owner uh, of the business and add tremendous value and to the point where they can't take that value away they need what you are providing. And to that point, they will give you equity in the physical business. And what we teach is around the digital twin in which you automatically have equity in that as well. So you get double equity, really. You can double get equity. double equity through that process. So um, getting equity without buying the business is truly um, a Cinderella type fairy tale. For sure. You, you get to have the cake and eat it too. You get to have... Money. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say <clears throat> it, it has never been heard of before, guys. Um, like I is not if it has, it's very rare where you can get equity in a business without ever putting any money in the business. Like unless you inherited the business, like that's the only thing I can think of. Like you, the business being passed off to you, that's pretty much it. No business owner is literally just going to just give you equity without an investment, financial investment. Then like we're going to talk about like the dangers of seller financing too. So a lot of you guys think you have this cheat code uh, because you hear a lot of these bigger people um, tell you about seller financing, but we're going to get into why seller financing the traditional way is just as difficult as trying to come up with the money to buy a business out of pocket. You hear me? Like it's, it's, it's not that easy if you are a, 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 a nobody. And when I say a nobody, that's not a diss. I'm talking about you don't have a reputation. You don't have experience. Or track, you know, right. uh, track record. Exactly. You don't have a track record. For example, like Curtis, he's bought and sold businesses and still own multiple businesses. So just in case you guys are watching right now and you never heard of seller financing, Curtis, give them the textbook definition of seller financing, please. Seller financing basically is where you, let's say a, a, a company costs $100,000 and the seller will basically take back paper or finance it themselves where you don't have to go out and find the money. The seller is the bank, basically, and they take payments over a period of the time you may have to put down, they may ask for some equity or some, you know, um, some stake in the game. Because if sellers do, do 100% finance, if something goes wrong, you just walk away and they get the, they get it back. And but you may have ruined their business by the time they actually get it back. So they want you to have some stake in the game. Um, but so seller finance is all about the seller being the bank. The seller acts exactly. as the bank there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's usually the, the cheat code that a lot of these business buying gurus will teach you guys. Oh, well, hey, if you ain't got no money or no credit, seller finance, seller finance. And they just throw that around like this, just some easy thing to do. But like when you do your due diligence, you'll notice that like it's like we were talking about in another video. You don't have to like butter these businesses, business owners up. They're going to need to trust you in order to do seller financing. And that's very difficult or time consuming if you don't like, like, like Curtis said, if you don't have a track record, if you never owned a business before, if you've owned a business before, you can leave with that. Like, yo, we, right. we have, we've done this with our business. We've been able to grow it to multiple locations within a year's time. So if you allow me to finance this, seller finance this, we know we can take over and do this and have you pay it out. And maybe even continue a little bit of your equity in the company as well, blah, blah, blah. So they might do it then. But if you brand new to the game and you just watch some YouTube videos and heard somebody say, man, you ain't got to put no, you ain't got to use no money. You can sell a finance. Is You might have to make more than a few thousand touch points as far as like outreach and prospecting before somebody even actually consider giving you a conversation about seller financing. They have to be desperate. Like you just got to think about that. If you own a business, would you do mm -hmm. sell of Would you allow somebody to pay you back over time with the money from your business and you put them in charge of it? Would you really be comfortable doing that? Majority of y'all, if you're being honest, you're going to say no. But that's exactly what you're taught to uh, ask business owners to do. They want to sell their business. This is why you got to go after like desperate business owners. We don't want like desperate business owners. We want flexible business owners, but we don't want business owners that are really doing like horrible and all of that. You understand? Uh, we want business owners that we can work with that are already on an upward trajectory, but they just might have needed a few things to fix or, or, or something or at least stable, but they just might want to get out for other reasons or, or something. We don't want no bum business. And a lot of people are teaching y'all to go out to bum businesses and you're going to have to do a lot of cleanup and maintenance before it's actually even worth anything. You might as well start with a business from scratch if that's the case, right? So doing seller finance with a business is not going to be easy uh, unless they're just pretty much like trash anyway. You hear me? Like, no offense to anybody, but unless they're like really doing horribly, a good business, unless they're family, and it still might be difficult then, but a good business is not really trying to do seller financing for real, guys. Not not the way That's you've right. been talking. That's absolutely, That's absolutely right. The, the other thing I think is important for people to understand is if you're on a nine to five and nothing wrong with that at all, and you're ready to move to the next level, and you want to buy a business. That's great. 
what you actually bought is a job. You just bought a job. You didn't Same actually buy it. You bought a job. You need to still be there. You need to still have, I mean, you may have been a supervisor at, at your previous uh, opportunity. This opportunity, it gives you to be the supervisor. And yes, you are absolutely the boss. And the boss comes with a lot of other issues and problems, right? And so you, you just bought yourself a job. That I mean, that, yep. that in essence is what you just did, you know? And yep. I think that's important to understand as well. You know, and, and this way we're teaching, you're not buying a job. You, you're literally Literally, you're, you're almost like a private equity firm as it relates to you're going to get equity in a particular thing. You're going to grow that equity through a different entity and you're going to reap the rewards, whether that re yep. reaping the rewards is six months, 12 months or three months. You're going to reap the rewards of, of having that equity in that business, especially in the digital twin, but also in the physical side as well. Yep. So and another good thing is, about did you what you say? I said that becomes very important as well. Yeah. Another good thing about the way we teach you to deal with the business is... Lay down. My bad, this dog. Okay. Another good thing about how we teach you to deal with the businesses, guys, you're going to become their partner. So even if they wanted to like leave, we'll be able to put somebody else in charge. We don't want to be the owner. Uh, we don't want to be the one hiring and firing. We don't want to deal with the day-to-day -day operations. We don't want to deal with any legal troubles or anything. We're going to teach you how to pull equity out of the physical and the digital of the business brand itself, okay? Now, we're going to go deeper into what the digital twin is in a minute, but what I wanted to say, guys, is, is um, a danger of buying these businesses. See, you're, you're wanting to buy a business, an existing business, because you want the passive income. Right. I mean, let's just be real. You heard, you heard how glamorous it is to get an existing business and have some passive income. So if that's the most important part, why not just get equity out of the business? And the good thing about what we teach you is the business owner themselves and you start to have profit the moment that the partnership begins. So it's not some three to six month or wait until the deal closes and they sell the business. It's not that type of thing. We're going to teach you how to plug in 10 monetization methods, some of which you can actually split the earnings with the business owner as well. So they can see how valuable things are. So if they do decide to uh, um, sell you business at the end of this, uh, this venture, you'll be able to say, yo, the company is worth this like months after I started dealing with you. We added three or four more uh, uh, income streams to this business that didn't require any overhead, any labor. You understand? Like, and it's hands off, automated. Like you'll be able to say all of this. So even if you did decide to buy the business, guys, like you're gonna make ten times more money the way that we're showing you how to do it. But if you don't want all of that responsibility, like you have to decide that right now. Let us know in the chat. Are you here just or, or in the comments? Are you here just because you want extra income, like passive income? Because buying a business is not passive. How they're telling you guys it's to do it on you, that stuff is not passive. Curtis will tell you from the inside. We don't have no reason to lie. Buying a business for a while, like they're, they're telling you this stuff, right? These people are talking, and I'm not trying to diss anybody, but a lot of them are talking from high rises. A lot of them are yelling down from Rapunzel's, Rapunzel's tower down at y'all at the ground. They're talking right. about, oh, well, once, once you acquire the business, you're going to set up a pseudo supervisor and do all of this. Dude, they have years of experience of doing this stuff and creating teams and knowing who to put in charge. And it still might take them a few months to do that with a new uh, uh, acquisition. Imagine you with no experience, you get a business tomorrow and you're supposed to try to find somebody uh, 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 reliable enough to head that business, manage, supervise, make sure the day to day is happening hot and do new hires without running it into the ground and jacking up your investment. You're supposed to do that in, 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 in a couple months. How are you going to scale? Uh, Curtis, um, okay, that's right. On average, okay, let's say a lot of people are telling you to buy a boring business, and I, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. But the way that they're telling you to do it, right, is no adding new revenue streams. Nobody is talking about adding new revenue streams or income streams. Nobody is talking about that. So basically, right. when the math is done, the passive income that you might be left with. That might even have to be split with the, the business owner if you're doing seller financing is 
like you were saying earlier, 1500 to, if it's something good, maybe even $5,000. Right. Right. And some of y'all so, might think that's Go ahead, go ahead. I, I, no, you, you go ahead because I, I'm going to give you an example of exactly that because I've seen after 15, 18 businesses, I've seen just about almost, I've seen a lot of scenarios and I, I did not just say I have unfortunately been in a lot of scenarios. So let me give you one. The I, I look at the p ls I look over the year or so I cash flow, meaning I'm like, Ooh, I'm putting $5,000 in my pocket. And all I have to do is, you know, I raise the capital. I have my investors. They, I owe them a, a you know, a, a monthly, um, I owe them a monthly payment, but the business is paid off. The owner is going to walk away. She says she has a manager. So whoo, this is cool. This is good. You get in the business and you figure out that the owner actually was working part time. So the manager that she was paying that showed on the bottom line, that was not a full time salary. Right. Yeah. And so now you left with a situation where you need a manager, like a full time manager. And that five thousand dollars just became like thirty five hundred dollars. And then because the owner was the the leader and she was the brand, that thirty five hundred dollars, people stop doing business with you because you're you're not, you know, in my case, I wasn't to be honest call, uh, you know, I, I won't mention the name of it, but it was, you know, it was a beautiful health type of deal. And and so people were used to dealing with they come in, they deal with the the owner who knew all about the business, right? So there was a yeah. segment of those in those that you lost. And all of a sudden, you go from five thousand dollars doing this, all I have to do is sit home and wait for the money to come in now to, ooh, I'm only making $1,000. And if anything goes wrong, like if somebody sneezes wrong, boom, now I'm at break even or I'm pulling out of my pocket. And that exactly. happens time and time again. It happens too many times. And so, you know, and, and nobody says, oh, well, things went wrong. So don't worry about paying me. Don't even worry about it. We'll just chalk it up to, you know, something. No, that don't happen either. So, so buying a business like that is, I mean, there's a lot of perils that go with it. And, you know, you got to be very careful. Whereas getting equity into without buying a business is a totally different thing. What if you could build that $5,000 and and ha- now that $5,000 is actually worth a lot more from a digital side than it is the physical side. And we didn't even really talk about that, explore that in terms of valuation and why that is so. But just think about it. Amazon is worth much more than we need. And we've said it several times. And people always ask me, well, how do you get a higher value when you bring in the same money? It's because it's digital and it's a lot less overhead and it's a lot less hassle and it's a lot, it's a set it and forget it. And people in today's uh, society will pay much more if they don't have all the headaches. So I can give you, I can give you $2,000 a month and you have the headaches or I can give you $2,000 a month and you don't have the headaches. And so which one are you going to pay for, for less headaches? And that's what the digital allows you to do. That's what the digital twin allows you to do. And, and it's fun. It's fun. (laughs) It's, it's so much more fun to be able to craft a series of offers and, you know, put together stuff than it is to have to solve the problem of why, you know, Francine had a problem with her husband last night. And so now <laughs> it spills over to the business and she got an attitude with all the customers and this customer saying she's rude. And now on Yelp, we got a, a, a one score because she was rude to a customer. And come on, come on. Yeah, yeah man. And he, he, what he said was powerful right there, y'all. Like, I need y'all to pay attention. Some of y'all came here because it got buying a business in the keywords okay so pay attention watch this we just wanted to position this as real as we possibly could because nobody else is going to tell you this a lot of people have masterminds where they're teaching you how to buy businesses so it's in their best interest to make it seem like buying a business is the best thing for you to do just like it's in our best interest to tell you to get into agency to partner but the difference is the company that cares the most makes the most we want to make the most so we're going to care about you the most and what i mean by that guys is we're going to tell you the real so that you can make an educated decision on what you want to do versus on having to deal with regret 
uh, a little bit later and buyer's remorse because buying a business is not like buying a new pair of shoes. You hear me? Once you buy this business and your name is attached to it, whatever horror come from it, you, you got to deal with it. And it might be long lasting, even, even if you were to be able to get rid of the business when it give you a headache, your name, your a reputation from that point on, when, whenever somebody discusses you that knows about that transaction is going to have a stain on it. Right. So why not? Don't even start off with putting the, don't even put yourself in a position where you can gain a stain. OK, he, he said something very powerful. He said, I can give you five the headache or I can give you two thousand dollars without the headache. When we build a digital twin for businesses or with businesses, they're our partners. But is is a uh, contingent. Uh, is contingency plans laid up. OK, we have an agreement mm -hmm. where uh, even if we're not working together anymore, even if they sell off the business or whatever, we don't have to fully sell our digital twin. So we're leveraging the business owners to build out our digital assets that will constantly uh, get, uh, uh, um, you know, passive income from from then on to decide. So we decide to sell, you know, the digital twin if we decide to. On top of that, since we're building this digital twin and making that company way more valuable, even on the physical side, we get to partake in the equity and part ownership of, uh, uh, you know, benefits of if they were to decide to sell off the physical side of situations, right? So, but we don't have to deal That's with right. the day-to-day -day operations. We don't have to deal with the staff. We don't have to deal with the policies. We don't have to deal with none of that stuff. Any lawsuit that comes on, we don't have our name on that company. So we don't have to deal with if they go out of business, we can just say, oh, sorry for you and move on with our digital twin that they we, we leverage them to build and pull our equity That's out right. of the physical. You see, so guys, like it's never like I said, when we first started this, it's never been an opportunity like this where you can get equity out of these businesses without having to attach your name and reputation to them or having to take the responsibilities. Because like he said earlier, a lot of them, when they're selling these businesses and it says, oh, we got staff. Yeah. They're not including the fact that they're one of the dang on staff members themselves. <laughs> so in order to keep up that amount of money that they promise that you'll be able to get, exactly right. you might have to put on the name tag and get out there with a mop, too. And even Cody said that, you know what I'm saying? And then and when you watch the uh, the show, I recommend you guys, if you really want to know the problems, ooh, if you really want to know the problems that these businesses be having when you try to buy them, Marcus. watch the profit. Watch the profit with Marcus Limonis. It's drama yeah. in every episode. Every time he goes to make a purchase on a business, they make it seem all glorious. But he spends like a few weeks there and he be, he be about ready to like retract his offer. That's how much stuff. When he goes and looks at like Curtis was talking about the PLs, when he go and look at all the extra crap that's going on and how things are structured and how it's unorganized, dog, no, y'all not gonna get that until after you make the purchase. You're not going to get that until after like you've already been made this and they're going to say, ah, no takesy backsies, <laughs> no takesy backsies. And you're going to be stuck with a headache. Now, in the rare, in the rare occasions, and you go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to just piggyback off of the profit. You know, in, in most reality shows, you know, they're staging that stuff. They truly are staging it. In, in, in the case of the profit, that stuff is I, I'm not saying that some of it isn't provoked. But it's real. And even if it is, it is based on, on like real stuff. Every time yeah. I look at uh, Marcus and the problem, I look at, quite honestly, my experience. It has been <laughs> the only difference is I don't walk away. I can't just walk away. I can't just get the money and walk away because the business is just even when you're in the business, even when you put a manager in charge, even when you give the manager a portion of the business, even when the manager is about to buy the business, there's st it's still fraught with all sorts of issues that you yeah. don't have when we talk about how to buy the business or and how to get gain equity without buying the business because you yeah. want. You want the fairy tale, you want the glory, but you don't want without all of the issues and the glory. You want glory, you don't want gory. And that's what you get. When you buy a business, you gotta get all the gory details as opposed to the glory of it. And you'll forget about the glory because the gory side of it will just overtake you and eat you up. What's up? Period. What's up? And, and that's the thing, y'all. Like a lot of y'all are like you said, nine to fivers. And you're about to purchase this business. And it's going to be worse than your job. You're trying to break out of one matrix by entering into another one. 
You understand? Like everybody making right. it all glamorous. They're making it all glamorous to buy businesses. But, but guys, before they can exit themselves out of the responsibility, they have to reach a certain level. Like, they, and there is uh, astronomical amounts of uh, 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 knowledge and and uh, experience and and freaking connections that it takes for them to be able to do this. This is why uh, if you will go and look at their net their net worth for one year. It'll still be the same a couple years later because before they can pull out of these businesses, they have to do whole makeovers of these businesses. And since they're just they don't know how to do it properly or they're I don't know what the problem is. It's difficult. So it takes a while. They're not telling you this stuff like I'll give you a good example. I don't have a million testimonials on my channel. Why? Because people mainly just advertise the winners. They don't tell you about all the freaking failures and, and the ones that give up and all of that extra stuff. It's the same thing on these other channels. You don't see as many testimonials because they're not going to tell you about the people that bought the businesses and regret it and be like, oh, why did I listen to this person? You hear me? Like, what did I get myself into? Nobody's going to tell you that stuff. That's why me and Curtis are trying to tell you. You could buy one of these businesses and have a good experience. But you also could buy five, ten of these businesses and it hurts you every single time you buy it. But the question is this. Why gamble? Why gamble when you can get that same five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar passive income per month without the overhead, without the responsibility, liability, without the legal troubles, without the day to day operations scaling digitally is way faster. Our net worth this year is not going to be the same next year. Because we know how to expand. We're not just buying these companies. We're not just buying like like how they're telling you to do it and then sitting there and trying to wait for it to grow. We know how to get these companies to expand rapidly without having to invest any of our own money and minimal amounts of money that will come from the actual business owner itself and exit whenever we want to exit. We can exit a month later if we decide to because how rapidly we're going to build a digital twin, leveraging the business right. owner. So it's just going to open up a world of opportunities for the business owner, for us and the business brokers that we're partnered with, guys. Win win for every freaking body. So, look, if you were trying to buy a business, we're not telling you not to. We're just saying explore your options because people aren't telling you everything. They're not telling you everything. Go ahead, Curtis. There, there, there's another. Oh, this is good because there's another point that's really important. Let's say you buy a business and you're having a great time. You, you're, you still got to manage that business. But you're having a great time. How many more can you buy in 60 days? Boom. Mm, probably not a lot. You can't scale buying a business. Now, you could scale it, you know, you could scale it maybe six months from now, a year from now. You could try to, you know, uh, buy another one and you could try to add, a, you know, another income stream. But six months or three months or even a month, you could have three or four businesses as as digital twins and and all of a sudden you've scaled your net worth and that's what we're that's talking important. about that's what we're talking that's about we're, we're not saying about. Can't, we're not saying that you can't make money buying a business we're talking about the fact that you have an opportunity to do it without hassle on top of that you're you're restricted on uh like some of these businesses that you buy you're not even going to have location freedom anymore it's not going to be remote you're going to have to actually go in there and do things and stuff like that. Other, also, like he said, since you're trying to leverage money, credit or somebody else's money or credit, you're limited to how how fast you can move to the next project. Me and Curtis are teaching you that right. through partner, strategic partnerships and joint ventures, you'll literally be able to partner with as many business owners as you can scale comfortably. Like it's not going to be as much uh, taken out of you as far as effort goes um, to scale these businesses, whether, whether they want to expand or whether they decide they still want to sell off. You can work on four or five projects in a month's time without it being like a headache because we have delegation and leverage and partners and affiliates and all of this stuff from all sides of the deal. Guys, and you don't have to even ever own the business if you don't want to. And you're going to make way more. Which one of you guys can tell us that if you bought any type of, I don't, I'm, I don't know what type of business you can buy tradi the traditional way where you can scale it to 200K. Like I'm talking right. about where you'll get to like enjoy a, a, a nice amount of that 200K. Like what business? What niche? Like which, which one? Because exactly. 
in agency to partner, we're teaching you to add in new income streams. We're teaching you to plug in 10 different monetization methods. You're not going to get that in any of these business buying traditional courses or any of these agency courses. You have 10 different monetization methods and you're adding on multiple new income streams that the business owner did not have any idea that they could do before. You're turning them into a local celebrity, right? And Or, or right. their brand at least. So the point is, guys, when you scale like this, you, it's, it's, it's unlimited pretty much. Like if we talk real numbers of what you can do, then it'll start really talking, sounding like a dang old fairy tale. So we'll just keep it at the fact that you can do this and get up to around 200k per month. A lot of you guys have agencies right now, and you're saying, Oh, well, my e commerce brand is making around 500,000 a month. How much of that is profit? Though? How much of that is profit without you having to run ads all freaking day? How much, <laughs> like, because I ain't stupid, I know the game. Don't tell me how much you got you made gross or revenue. Right? No, how much of that is profit, right? Like, are you able to pull 200k profit? Like, that's very difficult, like, in any agency type. OK, and then the fact that you need to do fulfillment and then the fact that most of these business owners aren't prepared to pay you guys over five to 10 K. And that's just if you found some real good bucks for TikTok shorts and all of this extra bull crap, how are you going to get to 200 K? That means you're going to need hell of clients. We don't want to deal with all that all them people. I want a few partners that's right. that we can have for the long term that we can scale to the wazoo and make as much money as we possibly can. And if we decide to sell. Then we sell. If we don't, then that's passive income. That's hands off for me and Curtis and however many of you guys decide to do it. Go ahead, Curtis. Let them know. Yeah. I, so, so I think you you brought up some great points uh, as it relates to um, the passive income side. And I want people to understand. I want you guys to really understand two things. One is uh, the passive income side has a whole market, and you can sell your passive income. So you can do the math for yourself, but if you have $1,500 of passive income and you offer a person 15% on their money, you can raise $100,000 and then give them the $1,500 a month. You can raise $100,000 because people are looking for passive income. Well, right, let me say that again. Somebody gives you $100,000 and you got to give them back for that year 15% on their money which is $15,000. Well, you're making $18,000 for the year. $15,000, $18,000. You you keep 300 or 3,000 divided by 12 whatever that may be. You keep that money yourself. And they're basically in essence gave you $100,000. So you got $100,000. Now, let's say you kept it for a year. In the ninth month, what you do is you sell your portion of the digital the digital twin and give them back their money. You, 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 man, you, where else can you do that? The other thing I want to talk about, is there is a very, um, one of the, the guy who has, the, according to him, the largest community of AI agency, uh, <laughs> folks, you, I am, I am absolutely rooting for him. I'm like, get as many of those individuals as we possibly can. Give us a hundred thousand of those people. Get the biggest community. Why? Because those individuals are the individuals that's going to be working for us. Boy. We sub out to them. Yeah, I'm we, not doing I want, I'm not to see no more. You know, I want you to know how to do the, 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 the chat bots. I want you to be able to take chat G, the GPTSs and take them over to uh, WhatsApp and take them over to IG and take it over to Facebook and take it over to your personal website. I want them to learn all that knowledge because I'm going to pay you a fraction of what I'm going to get. You're just a contractor. Man. People, don't be a contractor. Don't be a contractor. See, you either what is work this, man? When he's, when he, what he's telling y'all is if you're using a traditional agency model, guys, I mean, you still got a job, man, and you might even have like a whole bunch of jobs now. Um, and the problem is you guys are equipped with skills that none of these, majority of these, I say almost 100% of these business owners don't have. So how come you don't have the equity? Or how come you don't like control anything? So like, yeah, what he's saying is everybody is feeding everybody into the grinder. A lot of course creators, I'm guilty of this too because I didn't didn't know no better. But when you know better, you you're supposed to start doing better, right? So I don't want you guys to be agency owners anymore. You shouldn't want to be agency owner anymore. I always used to say, if you don't, uh, you ain't got no cash yet, it's because you don't own no assets. I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. 
If you ain't got no cash yet, it's because you don't control no assets. We want to take it a step further. We don't even want to own the freaking businesses that we're, we're getting these equities out of because we don't want no attachments. You understand what I'm saying? Like you want the benefits, right. the privileges, the pleasures without the attachments. Like some of you guys' relationship life right now is just the pleasures without the attachments, right? So you get what we're talking about. Right. We want that with business too. Put your name on what you're going to leave as far as a legacy. Put some, put your name on your gift on, on what God chose you to create, some foundation or whatever your dream was to build. That can have your name on it. But if you're just looking for some passive income, guys, you don't need the headaches. There's plenty of ways to get the passive income without the headaches. A lot of you guys are sitting here prospecting all day, getting on counsel to free consultations with business owners that, uh, what is this again? Or like, uh, give me a rundown on what you said this was and all of that stuff. And you on there with them for 30 minutes to an hour. And, and you got to go. We, me and Curtis, we was doing videos a couple of weeks ago. We was talking about people's booking calendars and they like how they'll brag that their calendar is booked up with, with consultation calls. That's horrible. That's 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 terrible. That's horrible, man. Like, dog, where where are you living? What's your life like? No, nah, no. Like, why do you think that's a good thing? They have to talk to a million people to make your money. OK, or my bad, a million people separately. If you're going to do it, do it once. Put all of those people on one call. And now you got the rest of your day. You hear me? Like a lot of these people are teaching y'all wrong. But we don't even want you to have an agency. Think about the client that you have. Think about how much money you made them this month and how he still or she still is paying you fifteen to five thousand dollars. Think about the fact right. that they didn't they wouldn't have made that 80 or 100 grand that you made them if they didn't have you. If they if you didn't have the skills that you have. Think about that and tell me you're still satisfied being an agency owner. Tell me. That's right. I'm not telling you to like do away with your skills because that's one of the things that make you valuable. But what I'm telling you to do away with the mindset of thinking you're just supposed to be employed. Dr. Miles Monroe, I want y'all to look him up when you get a chance. Uh, and he'll talk about how he's not employable. He's deployable. He deploys his skills out into the world and he controls how much money comes back in. If you're employable, then you're waiting around to get hired for somebody to use you for their benefit and they dictate how much you make. You need to deploy yourself and make it to where nobody can employ you. And this is the power, the superpower that me and Curtis is trying to hand to you guys because you guys already have the skill. You just need direction. You understand? You already got the skills. Right. You guys know how to rank on the first page of Google in a week or in 24 hours, some of you. Some of you know how to like master Facebook, TikTok, YouTube ads, and you're sending them millions of dollars and you're still struggling to pay your freaking bills. It's something wrong there, man. It's not your skills. Is this, is that right there? So go from an agency to a partner. You hear me? Leverage, 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 leverage. All right, Curtis, one, uh, go ahead and let them know something else before you know, we close. I, I just want to say you, you mentioned the skills that they have. And if you just sublimate that skill, if you just move that skill to a different avenue, you make a ton more money. Think about it for a moment. You, you're an agency and you utilize that skill to um, bring in five thousand dollars more with Facebook ads or TikTok ads or IG ads. You brought five thousand dollars in for that owner, and they're giving you about twelve hundred and fifty of it as it relates to that's your reward. Take it on the other side. And oh, by the way, there's no. Not only did you not have any equity or anything, there's no value there. There's no accumulated value. Watch this. Take that same five thousand dollars that you earned for the business, but put it in a digital twin. And let's just say you got 50% of that. So first you got $2,500, but let's look at what your digital side of the twin is worth. 2,500 multiplied by 12 is approximately $30,000. 30,000 multiplied by a multiple of four is $120,000. So instead of just having your little measly $1,500 or $1,200 or whatever it is, now you got <laughs> you have an entity in which you could take to the bank and say, this thing is worth $120,000 and I want a portion of that. That's, That's the up. difference. And, and it's the same. It, it's sort of like hot and cold water. It's still water. It's the degree. It's still water. Hot and cold water is still water. That's it's what, what degree you're dealing with. 
that makes the makes it makes you whether you can boil something or freeze something. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Man. There it is. Boom. So, uh, is it? You're going to make money, guys. You know what I'm saying? If you want to continue being an agency owner, you're going to make money. If you want to go and buy a business the, the traditional way, guys, you're going to make money. Like he just said, but there's a difference between hot and cold water, meaning, okay, how do you want to make the money? Do you want to make it, you know, nearly effortlessly? Or do you want it to be strenuous and like to the point to where you regret it? Like when a payment comes in, it's just not even freaking worth it. You're looking at it like that's all I get. You know, <laughs> you know, and that's going to be the same for if you're an agency owner or if you decide to be the business owner. A lot of business owners are selling. You look at it from the outside like this restaurant makes eighty thousand dollars a month. Why are they selling? It's because of how hard it take, hard it is to make that eighty thousand a month. What they got to put up with, You're right? So it's the same thing. Like like Curtis was saying, agency owners are selling their agencies. These are agencies that are at a hundred thousand dollars a month recurring. And they're still selling it. So that's letting you know something is wrong there. Why would you sell if it's passive, you know, and it's not all that bad? And, and it's not like, why would why would you like be rushing to get out of it? Most of them get up there and they don't stay there. They just do it so that they can document it and then create a course because owning an agency is hell. It's hell. Even if you outsource majority of it, it's still going to be hell, y'all. Because people would say, oh, well, you can outsource the fulfillment and then the, but it's still a lot of stuff besides the fulfillment. There's a headache, right? So majority of them progress uh, either to selling it off or creating some course or something else because it's, it's, it sucks. I wanted to. I want you guys to fire everybody and keep like three of uh, three to five of your your clients. Convert them to partners. You're like, oh snap! That's majority of my revenue. Fine. Well, do it in 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 stages. Okay, take those three to five partners and convert them to partners first and do and, and make sure that's going for maybe two months and then get rid of the rest of your uh, uh, your your clients or whatever. And I guarantee you those three to five partners will make you more money than those hundred clients that you have paying you 500 bucks a month. All right. Because you'll have the 10 monetization steps plugged in. So that's going to turn one partner that might be paying you three thousand dollars or something like that like curtis said you might be able to pull 30k out of that one partner right, right. so it just depends on how you plug in everything and if you stick with it and, and you use everything uh given to you right like dog but do you want hard money or do you want like you want it to be easier for yourself you know you want it to be easier that's just what it is guys we ain't gonna sit here and pitch you you know how to get into the agency to partner program. You know how to book a call. All of that is in the pinned comments. It's up to y'all what y'all do with this Black Friday money. It's up to y'all what y'all do with income tax money. But don't come crying back on YouTube because you have difficulty, uh, difficulty buying businesses or getting clients with your agency. We're showing you guys a way out. Okay. All right. Any last words?